Payday loans seem to be playing an increasingly prominent role in pushing Canadians to the brink of how they manage their debt. Doug Hoyes is a licensed insolvency trustee at Hoyes, Michelos & Associates, and we're responsible for a survey that showed this number. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you. So the th couple of numbers that jumped out at me, uh, you're obviously talking about people that are already sort of looking at insolvency. So they've, you, yes, they've got these to the are people who filed a consumer proposal or a banker. Okay, and f almost four out of ten of them payday loans played a role. Characterize that for me. Is that a shocking number? Is that what you would have expected historically? Is it higher than it used to be? It keeps going up every year. It's higher and higher and higher. So the amount they owe is higher. The number of loans they hire. Our average client who has a payday loan doesn't have one of them. They have four of them. Right. And because the interest is so high, it becomes an overwhelming burden. And that's why when you combine that with all the other debts they have, because a payday loan isn't the first loan you get, it's the last loan you get. So our typical client with payday loans already owes over $30,000 in other unsecured debt. They've exhausted debt. their credit card. They've exhausted the line of credit if they happen to have it. This is sort of the last stop. Exactly right. They're maxed out. If they have more than one, does that suggest they went and got a payday loan, found themselves in a trap of interest rates, and had to get another loan to pay the interest on that loan? That's exactly what it suggests, which, of course, is shocking because the government passed rules last year saying you can't do rollover loans. Hmm. So if you get a loan from a payday loan company, they can't give you another loan until seven days has passed when you've paid it off. So what do you do? Go find another one. Go find another one. And because they're all online now, it's not that hard to find someone to borrow from to pay off the previous one. And that's why next thing you know, you've got four of them. One of the reasons payday loans get a bad rap uh, and people really don't like them is that the interest rate, the stated interest rate annualized is at a level that is higher than most people would pay if they had any other option under the sun, including borrowing from a friend or anything you could possibly come up with. How, how do they continue to get away with those levels of interest rates? I know that regulators and lawmakers have looked at it, but it is a short-term loan. Mm -hmm. We allow short-term loans. That's what your credit card is. These are even higher than that. They're just almost to the point where people sometimes call them usurious, which I know is a legal term i got to be careful with. But they get to the point where they, they push the envelope here. Yeah, and they, they push the envelope because they can. So there's provincial and federal legislation. A bank is legislated federally. They're capped at 60% because that's what the criminal code says. But a payday loan is provincially regulated, and so long as the loan is $1,500 or less, then they're capped by the provincial rules, which in Ontario right now says you can't charge more than $15 on $100. But you're right, when you do the math, if I get a loan every two weeks and pay it back, I've paid $390 on my $100 loan over the course of a year. So yes, I would agree with you, 390% is probably usurious. And so we know that regulators are aware of this, and they've been taking steps. Are, are, are we educating people enough? And when I say we, I am going include the payday loan providers in this, are they making it clear, in crystal clear terms, if you take this $100 loan, you may end up spending $600 to pay it off? Is well, that perfectly clear? They are now required to state what the annual interest would be. So, okay, that's a little bit clearer. But again, you're talking about someone who has all this other debt, has nowhere else to turn. What are they going to do? I want to make sure I get my rent paid next week, so I don't really care what the rate is. I need the money today. I'll worry about it tomorrow. So I don't think education alone is, is going to solve the problem. Is there a responsibility on the part of the payday loan operator not to do a rollover loan? When we talk about that new regulation that said you're not allowed to borrow in order to just pay off another a loan, are, are the yes, lenders no. themselves supposed to be clear about this? Yes. In, in Ontario, it's now illegal. Seven days has to pass before when you pay off one loan before you can get another from the same lender. But payday loans, the short-term ones, aren't reported to a credit bureau. Hmm. So I can go from place A to place B. They don't know that I got a loan a day ago or that I'm using this money to pay off a previous one. So even though the law says they're not allowed to do it, they're not aware of what the other loans are. So off they go. And, and that's why our clients end up with four of them instead of one. Over the course of time when um, many of us have sort of looked into this and found it to be very troubling because it's often very vulnerable people who are caught in these already living at the edge, already paycheck to paycheck, the worst candidates for a high interest loan, if I may, uh, the answer has been that they have no options. They're unbanked in some cases uh, or the banks won't, won't give them any attention. Is there some truth in that? Is this a piece of the market that exists because it has to exist? Well. I would say that they have $30,000 of other debt, credit cards, bank loans, money. so they're not unbanked. Right. They're fully banked. They're, right. they're totally maxed out and can't go anywhere else. So the, the, the problem is they are, are maxed out and just feel like they have no other choice. So somebody comes to you uh, too late. As we've talked about this, they come 18 months, I think you said the mm -hmm. last time I talked to your associate, mm -hmm. uh, later than they should have. 
they come to you, they have these payday loans. What are the options when they file for uh, for personal bankruptcy? Well, the first option that we look at is a consumer proposal, which is much more common than a personal bankruptcy right now. So we say to them, okay, you've got all these debts, let's roll it into one monthly payment, a lot less than what you're paying now. So instead of paying $1,800 in interest, which is what our typical client with $30,000 of debt, including payday loans, is trying to service, yep. we end up filing a proposal where they're paying two, three, four hundred dollars a month based on what their income is. So it's a much more affordable solution for them, and that finally breaks the cycle and eliminates the debt. Are the payday lenders as amenable to working out a deal as some other uh, creditors might be? Yes, but fortunately in a proposal, it's the voting is based on dollar value. So if you've got a bunch of banks who you owe $30,000 to and you got 5000 owing to the payday loans, the banks are going to outvote the payday loan companies anyway. So in most cases, it's actually pretty straightforward to get a proposal accepted even when there are a lot of payday loans. On the other side of a consumer proposal, so I've worked out my debt, uh, I've managed it to get it down. Imagine paying 1800 a month on something you get no return for. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. staggering. Get it down to something where I'm actually starting to work away at my debt. Is my credit rating now shot so the banks will no longer extend? Am I now stuck with payday lenders, in other words, because I've gone through this process? Well, by the time you get to me, your payday loans already, your, your credit report's already shot. Fair enough. Credit rating's already toast. So by eliminating your debt, you're finally getting the fresh start. You've now got cash that you can start saving money, you can start rebuilding, you get a secured credit card. So people find that their credit score improves fairly quickly once the process is done because they're not burdened with all that debt. One of the numbers your survey found, and we should stress this was an Ontario yes. pool only, we're extrapolating for the rest of the country, but I think safely so, yes. uh, certainly to the big urban centers. One of the numbers that really jumped out too is, as you noted, the, the size of the loan is materially higher. I think from 1% of loans in 2011 that were above 2,500, now 15% of them are above 2,500. So we're talking about material amounts here. Why is that happening? Because the payday loan companies, when they were squeezed, you can now only charge $15 on 100, not $21 on 100 like you could before. Their revenue is squeezed, so what do they do? Let's offer bigger loans. Hmm. So now you can get up to $15,000 on a loan from a payday lender. Now, they're not payday loans. They're capped at 60% interest, not 390% interest, but that drives the, the loan value up. And you're right, it's like 19% higher this year than it was last year. It's a huge spike because of that. We've only got 30 seconds, but if I'm at home and I'm w watching this or I know somebody who's got one payday loan, should they be talking to you? Is one too many? If they can pay it off on their own, no. But if you got a whole bunch of other debts, then yes, absolutely, you need to reach Before out Before you help. get the second loan. Exactly. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Doug Hoyes is a licensed insolvency trustee at Hoyes, Michelos & Associates.